The Trump White House has been engaged in an all-out battle for the past few days against a new book that paints a devastating portrait of the president. Author Michael Wolf spent more than a year with inside access to the Trump campaign and first year in office, conducting what he says were more than 200 interviews. The president waved but said nothing as he left Washington today. That after a weekend full of comment. I consider it a work of fiction. And I think it's a disgrace. On Saturday at Camp David, Mr. Trump denounced the book Fire and Fury inside the Trump White House and pointed to supporters doing the same. They know the author and they know he's a fraud. The author is Michael Wolff. He depicts a White House beset by chaos, staffed by people who question the president's fitness to serve. Economic advisor Gary Cohn is quoted as saying in an email that the president is an idiot surrounded by clowns, someone who won't read anything, and gets up halfway through meetings with world leaders because he is bored. Wolf writes that for National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster, he was a dope. The book also quotes Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and former Chief of Staff Reince Priebus calling Mr. Trump an idiot. On Saturday, Mr. Trump hit back on Twitter, calling himself a very stable genius. He followed up at the Camp David News Conference. I had a situation where I was a very excellent student, came out, made billions and billions of dollars, became one of the top business people, went to television and for 10 years was a tremendous success, as you probably have heard. Uh, ran for president one time and won. Don't you, be you, condescending. You, On the Sunday talk shows, several members of the Trump administration also defended the president. You made it so, sir. CIA Director Mike Pompeo rejected Wolf's claims that the president gets bored during intelligence briefings. Those statements are just absurd. This president reads material that we provide to him. He listens closely to his daily briefing. Others inside and outside the administration have challenged the validity of some of what's in the book. But Wolf says the situation is so alarming that White House aides have even talked about invoking the 25th Amendment to the Constitution. In part, it provides for the vice president to take over if he and most cabinet members deem the president unable to discharge his duties. The 25th Amendment is a concept that is alive every day in the White House. To bolster his case, the author maintains that he had relatively free access to the White House. I guess uh, Sloppy Steve brought him into the White House quite a bit, and it was one of those things. That's why Sloppy Steve is now looking for a job. That's former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon, who was fired last summer. In the book, Bannon says Donald Trump Jr.'s participation in a 2016 meeting with a Russian lawyer was treasonous and unpatriotic. Late Sunday, Bannon apologized in a statement pledging unwavering support. He insisted he had not been talking about Donald Trump Jr., but about Paul Manafort, the one-time Trump campaign chairman. Today, Wolf disputed Bannon's recanting and said there's no question he was talking about the president's son. For more on the book and the firestorm it has created, I spoke with Michael Wolf a short time ago and I asked him how different he found Donald Trump from the man he knew for the past 25 years before he became president. In, in some sense, not different at all. I mean, he is the same... Um, um, I think Steve Bannon calls him um, uh, a big warm bear, um, a big bo a big warm monkey. Actually, is what Steve calls him. Um, he's you know he's in many ways a, a man a man full of flattery, um, uh, superficial in every respect, a salesman, um, and he is still that, except that he's the president of the United States. You've been saying, you've been writing uh, repeatedly that the people around the president now, including his children, are worried about him, uh, in some cases alarmed by him. What are they worried will happen? I, I, I think almost anything that he does worries them because it is always unpredictable. It's always unpredictable, it's extreme, it's exceptional. And it is outside the bounds of what one um, has traditionally done as the president of the United States. 
Well, as you know, and we can go through this, uh, the president, everyone around him are pushing back. The president is saying this is a book full of lies uh, by an author, he says, totally discredited. The U.N. ambassador, Nikki Haley, said over the weekend she sees the president and his staff every week. She never sees anything like this. How does that square with what you saw? It's, it's absolutely untrue. Um, <laughs> I mean, literal. I mean, I spent uh, you know the better part of of seven months uh, in in close proximity to everyone in the White House, and um, you know, and as I have said again and again and again, and I will say once more, I had no agenda. I was perfectly willing to write a um, a, a book in which Donald Trump was the un, unexpected successful president. I went into this experience. Um, uh, just waiting to hear what people would tell me. And what they told me, the people closest to the president, was that things became more alarming by the day, that all of them, in some way or other, were, uh, were afraid, afraid for their, both for their own careers and for the country. They were also, they just didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to expect. They woke up in the morning and um, they were, you know, in some, something of a, of a cold sweat. Almost all of them, for almost all of them, it was a countdown until when they could leave. Well, let me continue with some of the pushback. You quote the former White House Chief of Staff Katie Walsh is saying trying to figure out what the president wanted was like trying to figure out what a child wants. She now says she was misquoted. Do you have her on tape? Can you prove that I, she said it? You know, I, I'm not going to produce, produce tapes. I am very comfortable with how I reported what Katie Walsh says. And by the way, I, I don't see Katie Walsh coming out and, and in fact, saying, saying she did not say this. I think she says Steve Bannon, she was quoting Steve Bannon or something like that like that. But I will, and I will go further. There is not one person in, um, in um, close proximity to the president in the West Wing who has not used the terms that he is like a child. Sometimes it's an 11-year-old, sometimes it's a 6-year-old, sometimes it's a 2-year-old. Always he is viewed as a child because he is someone who needs immediate and absolute gratification when, where, and, and when he wants it now. You mentioned Steve Bannon, central figure in the book, uh, somebody you talk to a lot here. He did issue a statement over the weekend, push back especially, or it drew back the comments that you said he made about the president's son, Donald Jr. Um, why would he do that if he's somebody you well, rely on? Well, I, I mean, uh, for, first of all, he didn't. He didn't say anything that, that I quoted as saying him was untrue or even misquoted. What he does try to do in a, in a very triangulated apology in which he doesn't apologize is say it wasn't about Don Jr., um, it was about Paul Manafort. Um, now, there was the quote, which he doesn't deny, that, that in which he, I quote him as saying that, that that, that Don Jr. would be cracked like an egg on national television. Well, he doesn't dispute that. Um, and, in fact, in fact, while he certainly included Paul Manafort among this, this, um, uh, this group of, 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 um, of hapless people who were, who Steve also thought were, might be tr committing treason, it was very much focused on Don Jr. He explained that what happened, that whole meeting in Trump Tower, came about because Don Jr. was trying to impress his father so his father would give him more authority in the campaign. I, I absolutely stand my ground. Given what you saw in the White House and what you've reported on, what is your sense of the Mueller investigation? Do you believe that it will produce proof that this president colluded in some way with the Russians? I, I, you know, I have no way of, of, of knowing that. I can, uh, and, and I can only report what people in the White House told me. And what people in the White House told me is that actually they tend not to, not, not to give full credence to the idea of collusion, at least a, 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 a grand strategy of collusion. There might be, um, 
like Don Jr., some hapless collusion, but they all, again to a man, believe that if this investigation goes to the president's financial history, uh, then the president is in trouble and his family is in trouble. The conventional wisdom, uh, Michael Wolff, is that John Kelly, General Kelly, has brought a measure of calm and order to the White House since he arrived in August. Could it well, be the let me just let me just stop you there and 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 go over the history of the last five days, the common order of the president trying to um, try, trying to prior to restrain to impose a prior restraint on the publication of a book, the president going out and constantly tweeting about um, you know I mean I mean attacking uh, attacking an author, attacking his former subordinates, and then. Um, coming out and saying that he was he was in fact sane. I mean, this is this is not a White House and not a president that has been um, um, restrained and um, and had discipline imposed on it. And yet, you write, you say that the president and and General Kelly have contempt for each other. Yeah, and that comes as a surprise. Yes. Anyway, I, um, absolutely. Move on to the president's daughter, Ivanka, her husband, Jared. He plays a major role in this book. Do you see them still as, influ as influential in this White House as they were earlier on? I, you know, I think that they are spending a considerable amount of time on their own, on their own legal issues. I think, I think um, General Kelly has, has taken significant steps to to contain their influence. But yes, they are still the most influential people in the Trump White House. The 25th Amendment, you've said uh, that this is a subject of conversation in the White House. This has to do with the vice president, a majority of the cabinet um, agreeing the vice president should take over if the president can't discharge his job. Do you know that that has been privately discussed by principals in the White House now? Yes. I, absolutely. I mean, Who are let's now go. And, 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 and as I as I've as I've now as I've outlined the, as I've described this this before, it is in the matter of people say because you, you 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 know there's this constant kind of commentary on what Trump has has done, how to explain this. And so I first started to hear this. They would say, okay, that was weird. Maybe not 25th Amendment weird, but weird. And then it would be, OK, we're moving closer to 25th Amendment kind of stuff. In other words, it, it, it becomes a, a, almost a term of art within the White House of how to measure where Trump is at any given moment. Two other quick things, Michael Wolf. If things are as bad as you say, as you write, that they are in the, this administration, why haven't there been resignations on principle from the top levels of this administration? You know, I, I mean, I, th I think it's a it's a it's a good question, and certainly as an outsider, you would you would uh, you know fairly ask that question of everyone. The truth is that that you find many of the people find themselves in this situation, and it's and begin to see themselves as as the people who can impose some kind of logic and order on this White House, that they almost stand protecting the president. Um, they stand between, um, between the American people and the president. They are there in some—and um, you know, and, and, and I think that this is unexpected uh, for them all, because they're all ambitious people. They have suddenly become um, people with a patriotic duty. And finally, have you heard from people in the White House, in the administration, since the book came out? What are they saying to you privately? Uh, they are saying the, 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 the contacts that I continue to have, um, and a great many of the people who I have spoken to this book are no longer with the administration, of course. Um, but what I do hear, quite specifically, is the president is bouncing off the walls because of this book. He really takes it as a mortal threat. Michael Wolf, the book is Fire and Fury Inside the Trump White House. Quite a book. Thank you very much. Thank you.